putting modern gaming hardware into a computer that was end of life before I was even born. There's something just so cool about sleeper builds to me. You get to play modern AAA games and have your computer look like this. Plus, building them is also fun because you have to deal with the random little things like getting the original power button and LEDs to work and the fact that half your space is taken up by a CDR and a zip disk. I have wanted to do a sleeper build for a while at this point, and I finally have a case to do it in. There's just one problem. Yeah, this thing is actually still fully functional, and don't worry about the hardware that's in here. There's plans for it, you're gonna see it again. But for now, all of this stuff does need to come out. I'm gonna start by pulling out all these PCI cards. That one is a modem. This thing, which is a sound card. That's a network card, just regular ethernet. And finally, video card. I just realized we're not getting any of this space back because I can't take these out. That would ruin the look. I am gonna pull out the hard drives though. What is this thing? That's a solid 20 gigabyte drive dated July 1999. And that would be the motherboard with its slotted CPU and everything. Solid, okay. Well that was fast. I'm now left with a completely blank slate here to fill up with our new modern gaming hardware. But what exactly is going into this computer? I'm not exactly at the point that I can drop a thousand dollars on brand new high-end hardware for this thing. But I did go on Facebook Marketplace and I found this. Yes, it is a Dell pre-built, but if you pretend it's like 2016, there's some decent hardware in here. The first thing we've got here is going to be useless because it's only 460 watts. We're not gonna use that power supply. We're also not going to use this, but I have a GTX 1060 now. Bonus. And now we're at the stuff that's actually going into the sleeper build. This is a 256 gig NVMe SSD. Down here, we've got a seventh gen Intel Core i7, and beside it, that is 64 gigabytes of RAM. That's actually pretty solid. Bonus, this thing was also in there. This is... Oh, that's a terabyte. This is actually decent. Okay, that's a good score. This is the final pile of hardware we're working with here. We've got our motherboard with our seventh gen i7, 64 gigs of RAM. Then I've got a Corsair CX750 power supply. That's gonna be powering all this. And also it's gonna be powering this RTX 3070. And then I'm just gonna keep the little Samsung M.2 it came with and the little Wi-Fi card. So it'll have wireless networking. I wanna test out all this hardware and make sure it all works together before I try and build it into the sleeper case. So that's what I'm working on right now. Theoretically, this should be our power button. The guy that sold this to me left a password on it. Let's try one, two, three, four. The password's also not password. Let's just try user. I don't know, maybe they made it the same. Oh, <laughs> yep, it was the same. Okay, task manager. And yeah, all the hardware is showing up here, so I think this looks good. At this point, I can start trying to put our hardware into the case, but that's where we get the first problem. The I.O. plate is built into the back of these Dell XPSs, so I don't have one to put in here. I did notice that this is kind of just like a sticker though, so can I steal that? Oh, I think I'm actually just gonna 3D print one of these because that seems a lot easier. Motherboard is sufficiently installed. Now I need to power everything with this. Just like that. Credit to ATX standardized computer hardware. All of this stuff is kind of just going in here without any issues, like, there's been no modifications to this case. I will say though that modern cases definitely have better cable management options. This is gonna be a bit scuffed. Okay, that's our 24 pin. I'm gonna really quickly make sure that these cables even fit in the back and still have the panel close. My answer is barely, but I think that barely is still a yes. Actually, I don't know. That was definitely getting crushed there. Maybe I should just run them all on the front and not care at all about what it looks like in here. I think I'm gonna do that. I don't wanna ruin this cable and power supply. Okay, let's get this 3070 in here. That's the fun part. I have to figure out what to do with the fan, but does this not look like a complete computer build already? 
This went so quickly. I just got to stick that on the side panel probably because it's got holes in it. And like, this thing's kind of done and it came together so nice. All of this stuff lines up totally fine. Our DIY IO plate looks fine. Graphics cards installed. I don't have covers for those two holes, which kind of sucks, but I could probably just 3D print those as well. To get these front panel cables connected, I think I can do it. I just need to cut this in half so I can plug the wires in individually. Okay, let's see if that worked. Yeah, there's the power light. That's totally working. And I think the system's posting. Totally is. Success. Oh, this is already so cool, okay. Now the original Dell LED had a feature where it would go orange if there was something wrong. And I've been thinking about what to do with the turbo LED. I think that's a perfect thing to make it do. That'll be the orange light that the Dell used to have to indicate problems. I just have to figure out how to connect that, but I think I have an idea on how that works. If my theory here is correct, I just need to take these two power LED ones that I cut apart and connect them to the same thing as this turbo LED line and just swap the polarity on them. So one's one way and one's backwards. That whole thing is plugged in. Let's see if it worked. It should see orange there for a second and then switch to green. Oh, that totally worked. Oh, that's cool. Okay, I'm so happy with this so far. Let's get the hard drive light plugged in. Devastating news here. The hard drive light does not work. Okay, I know it's stupid, but I really wanna have all those lights working up front because like, it's not gonna look as cool without blinking lights. I'm pretty confident that this Dell motherboard just doesn't put out a signal for the hard drive light because the computer it came from never had one. But I have a plan. I got an Arduino, I'm gonna write some code and we're gonna fake it. We're gonna make the hard drive light blink no matter what. This has gotta be some of the best software ever written. Look at the power LED. It's perfect. It even like hangs for a bit. I specifically programmed it to kind of do that because I, I noticed that the actual ones would do stuff like that. I think that looks pretty good. I noticed that if I put this case fan here, it pretty much lines up with the holes in the side panel. So I just zip tied it there and that's the case cooling. That's the entire cooling system. I've got the side panel back on and I think that means this thing's pretty much done and I think it looks great. Everything just kind of came together and lined up like it was supposed to be in there. I mean, I guess the ATX standard has been a standard for quite a while at this point. This all just worked. All that's left to do now is put this thing through its paces, get some benchmarks going on here, get some games running on here, find out if it overheats, and yeah, have fun with it. Let's try it out. I just noticed that is about to hit 3000. Get subscribed for next week's video, guys. It's coming. Okay, to start out, I've got Cyberpunk 2077 loading up here. I have no idea how to play this, but it's a modern game, so should be a good benchmark. I have no idea what settings this is trying to run at, but I will find out. Graphics. Ray Tracing Ultra. You know what? Sure, let's run it on Ray Tracing Ultra. DLSS Super Resolution looks like it's also turned on. I'm just gonna leave that. This is what the game decided, so let's stick with it and see how it runs. Right away. First impressions, it, it runs fine. The mouse is super not sensitive though. Can I fix that? You know what, maybe it's because I'm using the stupid Microsoft Intelli mouse or whatever this thing's called. I'm gonna get an actual mouse. Oh, okay, that's much better. This is actually playable now. And uh, yeah, 49 FPS. It looks like we're not maxing anything out, so I don't know why the frame rate isn't higher. Like the graphics card is only at 70, 80% usage, CPU is only 80% usage. It is a little bit warm, 80 degrees. That could probably be a little bit better. Oh yeah, that's warm. Cooling was, was, not a, was not a big focus on this case. Oh, there's a skip dialogue button. This is so useful. Please just let me go outside and drive a car. I do not care about your dialogue. Before I completely give up on this game, I'm going to turn off ray tracing, turn off DLSS, turn off resolution scaling, all of that stuff, and we'll see how it runs on just high settings, no fancy like fake frames or whatever. 
Okay, I am stuck in the car for this cutscene, but without any ray tracing and NVIDIA fake frames or whatever, we're getting 80 to 90 FPS, which is actually a bit of an improvement. I think I've had enough of Cyberpunk's endless cutscenes. We're gonna quit this and try something else. I own a copy of 3D Mark. I don't know why I never use it in any of my benchmarking. I should take advantage of this. Really quickly, I wanna feel how hot the air in here is. Yeah, that's a bit toasty in there. This thing could probably go with having some more holes cut into it. I don't know exactly where I do that without ruining the appearance. Maybe at the back? I don't know, I'm not gonna do that now. Okay, we've got the classic Time Spy Extreme in here, but I think I'm gonna go for Steel Nomad. This is apparently a newer benchmark and maybe does some cool stuff? Let's find out, let's run this. Oh, I have to install it first. Collecting system info. I'm sure it's just noting down that it's running on a Dell XPS over there. Wow, Steel Nomad looks kind of good on a CRT. Is it done already? Yeah, it's done, okay. What do we get? 3,130 points. Is that good? Oh yeah, the average score for the exact same hardware that this thing's running is lower. Despite the temperatures, um, I'd say that was a big success. I'm trying out a bit of an older game now. I've got GTA 5 loaded up. I don't know what screen resolution it decided to launch in, but this looks terrible. I'm guessing I'm gonna have to fix that. Oh my God, it was actually 800 by 600. Why was that the default resolution? The only graphics setting I'm gonna change from what it defaulted to is turning off V-Sync, and the rest of this is very high, normal, normal, normal. I don't know, I'm gonna keep it the way it was defaulted to, so we'll keep that, and... 180 FPS. You know what, that's pretty solid. I'm happy with that. We're actually at higher frame rate than wattage consumed right now. We're only using 120 watts to get 180 FPS. That's honestly pretty impressive. I think this is going great. I killed a hostage, oh no. Saving the best for last, of course, we've got BeamNG Drive in 1080p on the high preset. No V-Sync as usual. We'll see how this runs. And yeah, BeamNG Drive runs as you would expect on an RTX 3070. This is great, no complaints. Except for that, I didn't mean to do that. It looks like the CPU in this thing turbos over four gigahertz, which is still pretty solid today. And nothing has even slightly touched our 64 gigs of RAM. The highest I've seen it go is like 12 gigs used. And with that, I now have a very competent gaming computer in a very old, heavy, and impractical case. Who wouldn't want to run this setup? Come back next Thursday for a new video. I'm thinking about enabling channel membership, so I could give you guys some extra videos. Let me know in the comments what you want me to do with that. And yeah, bye.